Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution! Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com I got murder on my mind Murder on my mind Yeah, James Yes (laughs) Finally A song for the people You know I believe that you reap what you sow. Life after love, yeah. Yeah. What? I'm sorry? Sorry? What would you say? I don't ever... Couldn't... I can't... Speak... Here, up. I believe, what? without saying in life after love. <laughs> and that's just me. That's a fun little cute fact about me. You can't say, I believe, without I can't in life hear, after love. Yeah, I can't yeah. hear yeah. or say, I believe, <laughs> in life after love. Yeah. I got you. Sure. I got you. Sure. Uh, in case you're just joining us on this little fun show we call Ross Patterson Revolution, let's say you've never listened to an episode before. We keep picking up a uh, lot of new listeners, right? Yeah. And some people are like, the fuck is going on? Yeah, like, they I don't shut understand. it off immediately. No, but they'll, they'll listen and they'll be like, what's the context of that joke and why? Sure. Like, I don't understand what the fuck's going on. Right. If you don't know what's going on with the murder on my mind thing, I want to inform you because it's... It's amazing. I know I shouldn't say that, but it's amazing. Um, it's just, <laughs> it was the next thing that had to happen. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. In, in the progression of where people are like, what next? Yeah. A reality show about killing yourself? It's like, probably. Probably. At some point. At yeah. some point. Yeah. We're going to have a euthanasia so, show. So yeah. If you, you talk about these, you go ahead. But yeah. Well, look, and for you, obviously, euthanasia is is killing yourself not i'm not doing a show about the youth in asia obviously right just want to clarify that with you because you tend to go hard asia you know you go hard against asia a lot so i just want to make sure we're on the same page but murder on my mind is a little different as you know we have the family plan on uh apple music i don't want to brag i don't want to brag i don't want to brag well i don't want to brag that i finally got added (laughs) i don't want to brag that you know (laughs) Cost me an extra five, but uh, and you're, it took you're on me, it. Yeah, it took me you're a while it. to get there. Yeah, you're you on it. You were still living your like single life. Live my best uh, life. Oh, oh, and I was like, hey, should we maybe do the family, the family plan? plan? We've been married for a long time. Yeah, I don't even know how long. No. So I still don't know. No, no go way ahead. to find out either. So I, I go on there periodically. I'm always looking for new music, obviously, to write to and all this shit. And I go on there all the time and I... I do the charts, like top charts, just because I want to stay current as well. Of like, all right, sure. there's shit that is indie that I find on my own that I listen to on like SoundCloud and shit like that, where it's like SoundCloud is fucking MySpace of music, essentially. Like, just a you don't you don't know what the it's, fuck you're getting there, right? To be real, um, but when you find some gems on there, you're like, oh fuck, why does this have 84 million listens? You know, and then you're you're like, oh shit, I've never heard of this that person, random person, yeah. exactly, yeah. And, and it's great. Like there was a, there's an artist named uh, like a white panda who remixes a bunch of shit and like turned out I was uh, like all of his remixes were rad and I found this guy I would never find him on Apple Music I right. would never find him browsing the top charts so I go to the the top of the charts because everybody was bragging about this Ariana Grande bullshit of oh my god she's got the one two three singles and the, the top three singles in the country she's amazing I fucking hate her music by the way C- cannot stand it um. It, there's just nothing to it. And I don't think she's good as like Christina Aguilera and all that other shit. So I went on there and checked on, on Apple Music. No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. There was a different number one song. And it was a, it was a guy named YN Melly. Uh, YNM. Melly. Okay. Right? Uh, and a song called Murder on My Mind. Sure. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Listen to it. It sounded like he made it at his house. Um, but it was catchy, catchy as shit. And I was like, all right, I guess I could see why this is popular. Maybe number one. Then I looked him up. I like, I Googled him and I was like, man, I, this guy's number one song in the country on iTunes. How he you, must be blowing up. How'd you go about Googling? 
Do you yeah, wanna... yeah. You, you want to press, uh, so it's G O O G L E. And you first go to the internet, right? Dot com, correct. Somehow? Okay. Correct. Uh, you that's can, what I'm you still can still not... go to www if you want to. Okay, yeah. Dot Google.com. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's what I'm still trying to figure out. Yeah, I, go ahead. You have a lot of hours that are still unused on your AOL card. So. That, on that it's CD. a disc. Yeah, yeah. Disc. yeah. You just yeah. want to pop that in and then ha- head on over to Google. It'd be great. Okay. So first, I, get on the internet. Got yeah, it. Yep. Uh, so I looked this guy up. It turns out Murder on My Mind is because he's actually been arrested for a double homicide. And it's his own friends that he killed. So he's been arrested for it. Now, I look at that story and I was like, oh, fuck. So I immediately go back. And re-listen to the song. Right. The whole second verse is about accidentally killing his friend and then re- reloading. Because, yeah. I mean, look, if you're going to kill someone in an accident, then you might as well do it for real at that point. So he reloads and then just empties, empties the chamber on, this, on his buddy, right? And I was like, holy fucking shit. This is why this is number one. This is, this is real. He's r- rapping about real shit. And I was thinking, man... I wonder if there's a music video for this. Like, did he shoot a fucking video? Went to YouTube. Boom. He shot a video. It is at 100 million views right now. And he's killing his buddy in his video. I mean. So exactly what he did do. Yeah. And that's the, like, if you do listen to it, guys, it's very, it's eerie. Creepy. Um, I've listened to it like 10 times in such detail. Him describing uh, killing his what friend. he did and holding them and what it felt like and what he thought about yeah. and what they said. It's it's literally play by play of how what he, he did. Yeah. And it's I mean, I had to turn it off. I I did it was it was too much. I listened to it, it like ten more times. For me. Sure. And his mugshot you know, because he just got arrested was hilarious. Like it was just a huge like smile of like, all right, Mm -mm. he's saying he's innocent and that God will prevail. Um, Not really sure. The police are saying he staged a drive by shooting and and killed his two best friends that I I guess they were aspiring and up and coming rappers as well. Okay. And he wanted to be ahead of them or something. So look, whatever this case is, is going to be super fucking interesting when it actually goes to trial or, or, you know, an indictment with a grand jury or whatever. And I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I've never, if you, in terms of marketing yourself, mm-hmm. right? Say that guy's probably the best right now. Even best in the game. <laughs> it'll be better if he didn't do it. Do you and imagine? he almost, and he made it look like he did or something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. How that's going to work out. Legal fees though. will will be take all of his money away but i who knows cool worth it yeah either way man that's some of the creepiest shit really creepy that's what i'm i've ever seen but i can't get the song out of my head i got murder on my mind it's catchy murder it's sound on my cloud mind. catchy you know what i'm saying for me there's a difference it is but i don't mind that like southern fucking dirt rap that dirt that nasty mixtape shit yeah, yeah like yeah, i don't yeah. mind that i grew up on that shit so it was just like all right cool like we where you actually had a fucking tape yeah you know like outcast so you know obviously me being from atlanta we've talked about this before but outcast was our band but like people were passing around those mixtapes of outcast before they actually came out oh, yeah. you were just like oh shit yeah this is fucking rad and it was you could tell it was made in like a basement or somewhere you know it wasn't slickly produced. And then you get to Hey Ya, and then that's and you know massive like, production and all that shit. Bye Even bye. Big Boy's new song, I just heard that the other day. It, it's good, and it's a hit, but it's super like poppy and commercial where you're like, oh, all right. There's a lot of piano in it. <laughs> you're just like... Heavy on the piano. Yeah, huh? surprising. Surpri- like when it, it started playing, I've heard it before in like commercials, I feel like for yogurt. Not in one million years did I, I feel like that was a big boy song. And then it popped For up the yogurt? other day. Yeah, yeah like, a, that's, like a go-gurt? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I, I promise you. Play the first like 20 seconds of this big boy song. Okay. And tell me it's not like, oh, that's in a mom's go-gurt commercial. Sure. Or like that, that's, that's what it seems like. And I think it's called like Cherry or Cherries. Yeah. 
God, I wish I wish I could just play this right now for you. We can't though. Uh man, yeah. I'm trying to think if the video would get pulled from YouTube. Because again, subscribe on YouTube. You can just play it on the thing. I, I guess, could, I right? Could hear a little. A yeah, little, a, a, a little snippet of it. And people can hear it over the. Uh, yeah. The mics. Tell 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 your uh, your little buddies out there, Bachelor Nation, Bachelorette Nation, what's uh, what's going on with Colton these days. Oh I just gosh. want that guy to jump the fucking fence. All I need is the fence scene to happen. <laughs> basically, <laughs> I am here. I'm rooting for the fence. Basically, <laughs> is who I've chosen to win this season. They keep teasing this because it's such a boring season, you guys. And I know you <laughs> care, so I'm going to continue to talk about it. It is so boring that the drama they need also yeah. never in Bachelor history have so many girls just bowed out and been like, I'm good. Like, I'm not. I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to leave. Right. And one of the reasons I feel must be the the virgin aspect of it where you just go uh, like they're all kind of like, I'm, I'm not really there. Like they're almost having a conscience of like. You know, this this kid really, you feel like, is really trying to find someone. Right, right. <laughs> and I, you're like, oh, oh boy, I was just here for the machine. I, and now I feel bad, so I got to go. I think, it's, I think it's two things with him. I think the whole virgin thing is fucking ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. I also think when the girls came back, you know, and saw the size of his apartment, which might be... 400 oh, it's a square studio. feet studio yeah it's um, a studio and then you start to realize that 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 might be your life as well it's a micro economy yeah. for sure <laughs> it may be in a in an extended stay a uh, holiday and where is that you would stay sometimes yeah. oh boy those fucking long shoots yeah and they it put, may be they Listen. put you up in an extended stay <laughs> Holy shit. And Dude. you have to like, it looked very holiday. -y, yeah. 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 Those, the color of the. Clayne's got a really great story about uh, next time he comes on, I'm going to have him tell this story about his extended stay for a movie. And um, they put all the actors in the, is this extended stay with Michael Ray. He was Michael Rappaport. Um, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to hear that story. Yeah. Um, but it's because those extended stays. For anybody who hasn't been there for a long period of time, because again, we do them from like shoots and shit like that, where it's just like, all right, cool. Yeah, well, you, you can put all your crew think, and everybody yeah. in the same place, and you don't want to be above them by putting yourself in, you know, fucking shutters in Santa Monica or whatever uh, on the beach, where you're just like, oh no, you gotta stay here. Anyways, I wouldn't feel that people way. open their because they treat it like their homes, mm -hmm. and they open their doors, and they're, I mean, they're using like jail. Like prisoner shit to cook food, and we were just like, "Yo, is that a hot plate?" Oh, yep. Is that a hot plate? Mm -hmm. So he tells this story about like Michael Rappaport walking by, uh, just cooking bacon. Like somebody kept cooking bacon out the door every day in the mm -hmm. morning, and it was like it was like a married couple who was just staying there. She was oh. cooking bacon for him to go to work out of an extended stay, but had to open the door. Because you're still inside a fucking hotel room. Right. <laughs> you can't even really open the windows that much. But yeah. <laughs> I'm going to play this song for you. Okay, let's you do it. You tell me if you haven't heard this in a, in a yogurt commercial. Right. Yes. <laughs> or like a, pro a promo package for the Today Show. Yes. Yeah. So it's called All Night, by the way. And that's. What it was, and I've heard this song, obviously, in commercials and whatever. Not in one million years that I think this was Big Boy. Right. Until it hit a playlist, you know. They're doing these workout mixes on uh, iTunes and SoundCloud yeah. and all that shit now. Where it's just like, oh, hey, if you like this, you've listened to this. And if you think they're not listening to everything you're doing on your phone, you're fucking crazy. Go look at these playlists to work out to. It's like, oh, these are all the songs I've listened to in my life. Yeah. How the fuck do you know them? Mm -hmm. So, obviously... I'm an outcast fan. I'm a big boy fan. This showed up in a workout mix and I was like, all right, cool. And I finally like took it out of my pocket and I was like, the fuck is this? Why would they put this yogurt commercial song in my workout? Oh, it's big boy. It's fucking big boy. Yeah. I'm not even mad. Get that fucking money, big boy. Hey, you know, I get it. Fucking Andre 3000 won't come back. Get that money, dude. I don't know why Andre won't come back. Because of that shit. 
Who fucking Some cares? Some people like Kings of Leon. Like they, you know, they listen to their new, their, their, their latest album. Their integrity will be their downfall. Man, I, I listen to their latest album. It's great. They're great. I would still go see them again. I love Kings of Leon. I told you, I don't want to see people up there that don't want to be there. I think it's switched now. I think once that fame is gone and you're just, you have to just keep playing again. Well, I think the transition is where they have the issues of they were playing small clubs. Everybody that came was die hard. Nobody knew about them. They slow build. And I think that transition to moms in the crowd Oh, yeah, 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 is yeah. the hard part. Yeah, and yeah. once you get past that and you accept it yeah. and you make that money and you just go, I'm playing for moms. Yep. I'm playing for moms. Yeah. And they're 10 year old bo- boys sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. that they bring with them. Yeah. So I think once you get to the other side of it, which hopefully they have, then you just go, I'm just not going to be cool anymore. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm not going to be that cool <laughs> band I always thought I was going to be. Yeah. And you can, you can really enjoy it. No, I, I, I get it. I just, uh, man, they're good. And they, I, I, feel that that, so good. I, th- I feel that that band could still have hits where I don't know about others. Like, you know, Pearl Jam and all that shit. I wish they were like, I, I don't understand why they can't have hits, but like. I just, I feel like Kings of Leon could still do it. Yeah, they could. Even the other night at the Grammys uh, when Alicia Keys was hosting, right? Mm -hmm. She did a a cool thing where she played two pianos at the same time with two different hands. Yeah. I mean, she's talented as shit, obviously. It's fucking uh, ridiculous. It's crazy. But she was mixing in uh, R&B to rock and all this shit, like different songs. So she played Clocks and then she played a Kings of Leon song. Yeah. And I was just like, oh man, all right, fuck. Yeah, Kings of Leon. Let's have another one, man. Let's sure, have another they fucking could. hit. They but could. I think I feel like if Andre Three Thousand came back to Outcast, they could do it, man. I think he. I think look, they said Big Boy and and the Andre Three Thousand said this. Big Boy was the better rapper. He said he was fucking genius. I'm not on his level, but I think production wise, it was probably Andre Three Thousand who had all these weird creative shit. Yes, and his voice was just cool. Yep, where. It just mixed in with the other one really, really well. And uh, I think if they got back together, man, it would be amazing. But I read that Obviously. article. I read that article and he's he's still recording, by the way, Andre 3000. He just says he's not coming back. But, you know, it's, I find it hard to believe that you're just going to record and not come back. That would be like me saying I'm right. I'm writing something else, but it's never going to come out. Right. What's why? You know, like that would be a lie. Right. No. Um. So, I think he's just weird enough that he would record for himself. He's just weird enough. Maybe and then it's the Prince classic did. case of, yeah, but it's a classic case of not too great apart, but really great together. Yes. You know, of yeah. like big boy, if it was just him, he would have fallen into a pile of rappers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he wanted to do, which yeah. is like mainstream, just kind of hip hop rap. Yeah. Andre 3000 would have fell into a pile of, just weird shit that Art. people couldn't really, everyone couldn't get behind, but together. It's a perfect mix. They were amazing. Yeah. Man, that sucks. Kind of like how you should never leave me. Do you know what I'm saying? Jesse, I'm not leaving you. No, no, I know. I'm just saying. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just saying. Look, I know. Ever. I, look, I know. For the first, I'll be serious for the first time to the audience because we joke around all, all the time. I, I love you more than life itself. I'm not going anywhere. Ever. So... Like you were my best friend in this world. If, if you were to go, all the rest of it would go to shit. So, uh, in case there's any doubt of the audience of like how much we fuck with each other, like that's real shit. They have to know. You can't I don't know. fuck you never with know. somebody that much you never know. unless there's a real foundation, right? Eh, you never know. At least this one time. That's the, that's now the God's I'm, honest truth. No, I'm the asshole. So no. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Um, but you know who is going somewhere? Perfect, I perfect know. segue. I'm gonna cry. Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga, she split up with her fiance. Of course she did. <laughs> and did I tell you this was gonna happen? Yes. 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 Because that did. kind of shit, it's not natural and it's not right. <laughs> and I don't care how much you were saying it's all for business. They know the deal. They know the drill. Mm-mm. Give me you a. You can only take so much of that bullshit. Give me a Gaga uh, 
<laughs> you're you're really great at it. Oh. You're really great no, at it. No, you're making give me fun one, of me. One gaga uh, <laughs> shallow. Give me, give me, give it for the audience. The audience need this. I don't, I don't need this. The audience needs this. Though. There it is. There it is. I went real deep with that one. I think you went real Deb with that one. I went real Deb. Some, somebody asked us to bring back Deb and Dale. I think we'll do it for sponsors uh, here in a minute. We'll, we'll bring back Deb and Dale for sponsors. But I think, I think you're right with this whole shit. Like. Yep. Maybe it's, Bradley's it, girl can handle it, but b- to have both of their people, respectively, uh, be cool with that right. for that amount of time, um, no matter what, you're, everyone has an insecurities. It doesn't matter who the fuck you are right. or what business is, it is. You can say a million times, it's all business. It's just a movie. We're just doing this. And at a certain point, it's just like, how, how strong do you want me to be? Like, how secure in myself every second of the day do I need to be, right? Yeah, and look, they're, tall order. they're already teasing that, that uh, duet on Sunday night as well that they're singing for the Oscars. So then this hey, is so going to put strain, this is gonna put strain on his yes. girl. Oh, because yeah. Because you she can knows. always just say... She has a fiance. Yeah. Look, we're both we're in love with our people. This is just business. Just business. We're just friends. No. Is there a world where you see them actually getting together? After watching her documentary that that 5 foot 2 on Netflix. No. That's too much for no, me. No, I don't or think that else. they get together, but I think that Bradley also um at some point is not with his girl. And they're not going to be together, but it's it's the same thing with Chris I, Pratt, where it wasn't that Lawrence was the one he was going to be with, but it made him reconsider. Think of his own relationship in a different way. And that's what you need to be worried about in those kind of situations. Not that they're going to hook up. I don't think that they have, and I don't think that they will. But it's what it does to your re- relationship, the respect you have for each other, what people think and say about you. So the Anna Ferris thing, it wasn't that they did anything. It was all the things that they were saying about her and her relationship and them together. And is he with her? And is he, should he not be with them? And they have problems. So that is what's part of it too, is things, what other people think right. of what's going on and that you're some kind of doormat that lets him fucking be all over Lady Gaga all fucking night. You know what I'm saying? And you start to feel like, who the fuck am I that I can't be like, hey, we're not doing that. Well, this, is, this, this story is interesting for two reasons for me personally. Um, one, she announced this split right after the Oscar voting had ended. So for those of you who don't know, who think like, oh man, these get sent out, or you vote like you know months in advance or whatever it is, it's not true. Uh, the Oscar balloting ended at 5 p.m., I believe, on Tuesday. And it's the same for the Screen Actors Guild Awards, where, fuck, you can vote. Screen Actors Guild Awards, because I'm a member, obviously, and I vote for that shit. Uh, they end on 5 o'clock on a Friday, and then the show airs on Sunday. So, I mean, literally, they're tallying those votes, you know, Saturday, whatever, and then you know. The Oscars, they have five days to tally these votes. Okay. And then the show airs Sunday. She dropped this news right after the the balloting was closed. So like, what does that mean? What, you why don't want anything. Staying... So here's the thing: when you're campaigning for these things, right? Okay, you don't want anything. You to don't take want away any negativity. Got correct. It. So you, you don't want any you know relationship problems or mm-hmm. any of, of that shit. Other news. To and not come only out. that, but this guy who she was engaged to is a, is a very high powered manager and right. agent. Like a lot of their clients are voting on this shit and. You don't want anything negative to come out about you or the movie or whatever, right? Uh, so she was out of that. The other thing, the, the second part that this is really interesting for is now everybody knows this story going into Sunday. So now I'm going to be watching this with extra interest. I don't know if you are because we watched that thing in Vegas and it was like, Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. get a room. Get a fucking room. Oh, you do. You're playing at the MGM so you can just stay upstairs. You do have a room. You have a room there. And Bradley needs to call his... You know, I don't think he stays with that chick anyways. You can the the Czechoslovakian supermodel thing. 
Like, oh, you think they wouldn't? They won't stay together anyway. Regardless like of kid, this, which is kind of like, yeah. Uh, but, but so does Anna Ferris and Chris Pratt. You know what I'm saying? Look, if you're rich, you can handle that kind yeah, of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I so that's definitely what what I think. And I thought the same thing with Jennifer Lawrence and Chris Pratt. I thought they're not getting together, but it will ruin his marriage. Cause you can't fucking do that shit. You can't, I mean the way that he was with Jennifer Lawrence is akin to how they are together. Just so in every interview, they're so like, yeah, you know, yeah. into each other. So, and, uh, um, Lawrence and Pratt were just like, I mean, just joking around all the time. Like, <laughs> oh, just like together, hanging on each other, taking weird pictures in the back of limos. And you're just like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? I, I thought they were going to end up together. I think. No, I, remember, wait, it made him my, not like what he had at home. But I predicted on the show that they would be together in six months. And I was after they they had split. I was wrong. And I think I know why, uh, actually. Just seeing that the two paths both of them have taken now. Jennifer Lawrence, because she's engaged. Yes. And Chris Pratt, who's also engaged as mm-hmm. well. You have Chris Pratt, who will never come out and say this, but he's a Republican. He shoots guns. He hunts. He goes to church. He's yeah. super. Yes. He belongs to that weird, that weird Christian church, whatever the fuck it is. Right. Um, so you have that, which is like very conservative. Yeah. J- Jennifer Lawrence, who what took is taking time off of acting to be an activist and be political, which means, you know, she's obviously super Democrat. I think that's when the the divide happened of like, oh, this isn't, we couldn't actually get together. And I be don't married. think, again, I don't think they ever were. I think they gave it a go. Going to be together, but I think they really connected in a way that made them rethink what they were both doing with their lives. So I think they, there's, you can't fake that. And it's you can't have that outside your marriage with with someone of the opposite sex that's single. It's not okay. Well, <laughs> it's all over now, so it doesn't not really natural. matter. So doesn't really matter. No, I'm just saying with uh, Gaga and Gaga and, and Coop. Give me one more. Give me one more. Shallow. No, I can't. Just, I'm going. It's too for the people. Low. It's not I'm me. Horse. Go. It's it's for the people. It's not for me. <clears throat> oh boy, that was sexy. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> There it is. Ah, oh, look at that. For the video show, she just gave a gaga face at the end of it. Yep. S- subscribe on YouTube. Ross Patterson Revolution. You want to see this. Yeah. You want to see all of this. <laughs> Since we're getting to Deb and Dale, I don't know who requested that, who wrote in. a bunch. Of, it was a bunch of people, but one, one was like dead serious about it last night. So this is for you. I don't, have your, I don't know your name. I'm sorry, but Good I love job. you. Uh, first and foremost, <laughs> talking about BlackRifleCoffee.com. Man. I have it in my cup. Oh. I've got it in my cup right now. I got it in my quads. You know, that's where I got that coffee. You injected this morning, huh? Yep, right. I went, I went straight into my quads. On your own. I you did. usually have me do that for you. <laughs> yeah, just poke you in the morning. Yeah. Just a quick poke. Just a quick poke. You know, to get the old engines roaring. Uh, go to blackriflecoffee.com. Tap in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. I put your picture away. <laughs> I put your picture Pick. away. Sat down and cried today. What, what else? What's next? Uh, who, who are our sponsors? Oh, fucking ghost bed, man. <laughs> There's nothing more I enjoy than laying my whole dick in my entire ball and nutsack area on a ghost bed. I mean, just really stretching it out, you know? I almost yeah. like to put a cutting board down right on the mattress. That way I can really peel it out of the cutting board, spread my legs, get a nice adjustable base, mm-hmm. pull the lever on it, mm-hmm. and just go straight up, you know? That way I can really feel a nice tug on my scrot. Your face down. That's ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros for you. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros for you. That's what you need for your ball sack. Uh, no, 15% off uh, military and uh, first responder at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. $7.99 off a bundle package and uh, 36 months. Still. No interest. Pay as you go program. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. What do we got up next? Strikeforceenergy.com. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, Put a little juice in that noose. Yeah. <laughs> did what? See, did you see that noose yesterday? The noose? <laughs> yeah. What? Was it a fashion show for, uh, it wasn't Gucci. I forgot. I forget the name of the designer. But it was uh, somebody wearing like a noose as a tie. And it was just like, whoops, oh, whoopsie. Lord. Whoopsie. Ding here dong. we go. Yeah. Fashion show. And it was just people melted down. Uh, strikeforceenergy.com's all your energy needs tasty tiny little tin pouch full of energy four amazing flavors lemon a ridge make America great again and orange ah the orange it's, it's good for vodka and sodas that'll be Sunday night that'll be our Sunday night drinks for the Oscars oh that's right I wish we could go live and just do this together I wish people could watch it with us I know and then because to hear you and I bitch about this shit after a few drinks is oh, gold but i don't i so we might fun. be fucking banned from the internet though uh, with all the shit we say yeah we do go <laughs> more private conversation type stuff <laughs> right oh, i'd even put man. on a gown huh <laughs> i'd put on a gown i could probably squeeze into that uh prom we went to that adult prom remember yeah oh yeah oh yeah that adult prom over at the uh the beaver yeah the old sneaky. uh the old sneaky beaver old community sneaky. center yeah, yeah. yeah I had to get that it was in. fun wasn't it i had, I had that bow in. for femininity just so people <laughs> know i'm a gal he was a uh, um a body hugging number wasn't it <laughs> You could not keep your hands off of it. <laughs> you were loving it. I'll pull out that old sack. Man, when you when you squeeze your lady, you can you can feel the spanx just right at the top. You know I it's love. love. Yeah. You know it's love. Yeah, and you just think about <laughs> pulling off that gown and seeing that beige and beautiful <laughs> body just covered in beige. <laughs> Because I go beige Spanx. <laughs> Some people like a black or a white just in case we have to take the clothes off. I still like to <laughs> keep try and keep the mystery going for as long as I can. So I'll still, I'll go into bed with them. <laughs> kind of like waiting for them to notice, you know? <laughs> By the way, this was uh, StrikeForceEnergy.com oh, where you could uh, really wear your Spanx where you need to. <laughs> Go to yeah, StrikeForceEnergy.com. Well, I, wear them all, I wear them through the whole act, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you just cut a hole in those Spanx and sometimes they won't even know. Nope. You don't have to have the moment where you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just the cut Spanx a hole in come those off, spanks. the hair comes out, clips out. The eyelashes <laughs> go to the forehead, you know. The fake ear comes off. You uh, know? Uh, the rubber ear, you know. I was going to say, you the only ear? thing real on me. Is that nose, your left ear? <laughs> my nose and my arms and legs. <laughs> Everything else has been altered in some way, huh? <laughs> with, with gals. Most oh, gals. Most if, gals. If you want to alter your mind, go to strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> Type in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Subscribe. Get it. 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. Next up, we got straightrazors.com. Beautiful for shaving a pregnant bush. Don't do that. Uh, That's a clean cut. Smooth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How smooth is it? So smooth. You rock it? <laughs> Boy, that one really rang like Freedom's Bell. Oh, yeah. That one rang like that bell in Philadelphia that's cracked. <laughs> that's too the, soon? It's the Freedom Bell. Yeah, too they, soon? They, yeah. Is it too soon for it a... Too soon for a Freedom Bell joke? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> too soon for, uh, for an old 1776 joke? You tell me. Uh you tell me these days you never know <laughs> huh? really... these people get offended about anything <laughs> don't you fucking talk shit about the freedom bell right when it rang Sorry. it fucking rang Sorry. it rang amazing <laughs> um i don't know what that has to do with straightrazors.com but i love them products for men shaving products for dudes shampoos conditioners uh, shaving pregnant bushes 
Uh, don't real do good that. for shaving your your quads. Don't. Yeah, you could do that. You can do you a can quad shave. shave. Nice quad shave. Just that. on the top, though. Yeah. Don't go sides or back. No, just, just, just right one off the top. strip right in the front. Yeah, let's give that patch of hair on the back of your shoulders. Um, you can shave that off. You can get mustache waxes, beard oils, conditioners. Fucking their smolder aftershave is the jam. Go to straightrazors.com, type in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. And as always, pick up my books. When Darkness Falls, it doesn't catch it at night. She cries while he rides his steed. Both available on audio, uh, books, Audible, iTunes, all that other bullshit. Each are six and a half hours worth of magic with a team of actors. This one's the highest rated Audible book of all time. When Darkness Falls, he doesn't catch it. James, what James up? Zakins. What up? Uh, one, the, one thing that was trending yesterday all day long was this John Wayne thing. Okay. Um, people were talking about this racist, sexist Playboy article that, that John Wayne did in the early 70s. Yeah, it's the early 70s. Yeah. Well, well, look, was John Wayne super racist? Probably. Sure. Probably. I mean, sure. it really shows in the article, which is fine. Right, um, right. Again, different time, different era. But... I, this started. This started trending. It was trending all day long, and everybody was talking about this. And people were like, "Fuck John Wayne, whatever." This, yeah, exactly. So he's gonna be so pissed, pissed. to hear about yeah, it. <laughs> he's, he's dead. He's, yeah. he's dead. Yeah, uh, so we're good on that. Yeah, fuck you, John Wayne. Yeah. Who else are we gonna fucking I don't know. shame for I know. being racist it, now? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, like dead people for being racist. Anyways, this article that is resurfaced. Mm-hmm. This was called out years ago. This was called out in the 80s. Like, people thought this was racist and sexist for a long time. Sure. Not, not just now. Sure. So I don't know why people are digging up old shit and then pretending like it's new, saying, oh, my God, this is so crazy. No, this wasn't crazy. There was actually a line in an uh, fuck, man, not an NWA song, um, Public Enemy, mm-hmm. pu- Public Enemy song. Uh, motherfuck him and John Wayne Cause I'm black and I'm proud and I'm ready I'm hyped for some amp Most of my heroes don't appear on no stamp Like that was, re- that was in regards to that John Wayne article Like they don't this, this was in the 80s You know what I'm saying Like people knew that this article was racist And all this other shit Like yeah. the new people who were just discovering shit and, and now they're mock outraged by it Yeah, That's what I can't stand Hey like, yo Yeah, We know We know This was Fucking we all knew. 30 years ago. The article came out 40 years ago, but like the outrage has been there. Hey, guys. Yeah. And you know sh- they used to not let black people drink out of the same. Yeah. Yeah, we know. But dude. like Chuck it D and Flava Flav covered this story in 1988. You covering it 30 years later. What? Why? I, I don't understand. Like and you're just digging up old shit. Who's I, doing it? I, in the internet, just, just fucking people on the internet, and then it becomes a thing. Like I remember, there was this ESPN reporter, Sarah Spain, who I got into it with on Twitter, who had was dragging Sean White for this fucking Me Too situation. That's right. He was sued by uh, a band member. He had a, a band and a drummer in his band was female, and she sued him for sexual harassment and all this other shit for basically treating her like one of the guys. Exactly. And the case has been going on for years at this point. And uh, he refuses to give in, which is great. Uh, I love when that happens. And Sarah Spain was like, oh, my God, he's sexist. And, right? and I was like, hey, this, this story is two years ago. Where was your outrage then? Yes. Just because you're just now reading it yes. doesn't mean that, you know. So what is it that's happening with John Wayne? This I don't know. This, that, uh, this like, article is he getting is, some. No, oh. he's getting nothing. He's okay. dead. He is dead. And this is 45, six years ago. Like. Hey man, listen. He's dead, and this has been a long time. Like you could go ahead and just start from I don't know Christopher Columbus if you really want to talk about racism and all that shit. Like just go from 1492, right? And then you know, post how outraged you are about that because this is what we've come to now. Like this story is fucking old, and again, it's just recreational outrage. Public, like, it's yeah, just fun. Public to- Enemy and black people have covered this story in the 80s when they were fucking pissed about it. So I don't. Nothing is is uh, really changed now. So when I saw this, it was because it was all day long. It was like, oh man, they kept passing around this Playboy article, and I was God. like, fucking a. I'm like, am I reading this right? And, I, and that part of me, here's the fucked up part of me, is I thought that maybe John Wayne was still alive, and I was like, wait, is he still alive? He's or? dead, right? Yeah, 
But I thought that maybe were like I was like, man, is he still alive? And they're going to honor him with something, right? Or, right? Right? He's one of those people that you, you know, just kind of. Died, yeah, there he was are old, right? And there are a couple of people where you go, "He's not dead yet, huh?" Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like they just sort of <laughs> dropped off, and they are home or something. Yeah, just being old. I know, I know. So no, he's dead. He's definitely dead, right? And this article was in the Se- uh, 1973. 1973. No. That was an interesting time, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot different. <laughs> Uh, for sure, different than now. I mean, there was a lot was of it? Was shit that Nixon? going on. Yeah, it was Nixon. It was. We were just watching that Cheney thing. We were watching that last night. You that, think that, it's that fucking crazy now? Oh boy! So we we ended up watching this Dick Cheney doc on Showtime last night. Wasn't great, but it was just sort I, of. Actually, no. I I think it was okay. So you you because you went to sleep and I was like, fuck it. I ended up watching. Almost like I, I got about three quarters of the way through it where I was just like, right, I'm going to call it. But um, I didn't think a documentary on Dick Cheney would be interesting. I didn't know how long he was in politics. I didn't know his story, but right. he was there from the Nixon days. Oh, yes. I mean, oh, wow. Yeah. I, like, he was in the White House since he was 30? 33. 33, I yeah. mean. The youngest guy to be like like second command, like White yeah. House chief of staff or whatever. Yeah. The weird thing is, 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 is it 33 years old? He looked older than he does today. <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about putting age on you? Go, go through that Nixon shit. But what I found fascinating about it is, you know, we, we, talk, we talked about this on Drinking Bros podcast the other day, uh, Evan and I, where, mm-hmm. you know, the, this mass hysteria of media and where it's all going or whatever. And then we're watching this and it was like, oh, has this really ever ended or what was there, be- there? I think there was better journalists back in the day, but this mass hysteria for media and all that shit now, like, cause I think, I, know, I think man. it's, here's the thing. So after watching this last night, because we were watching this and we were like, holy shit, it was fucking crazy. So you take what's going on now with Twitter and Facebook and all that shit. And you know, the British parliament just came out and said, look, we've peeled behind Facebook. They're fucking digital gangsters pumping this shit through people. Sure. And it's true. Same with Twitter and Jack Dorsey and them. Like, I think all of these companies are taking money from Russia and China. We have no idea. And they're just pumping out bullshit articles and everything to, to cause a divide and hatred in this, com- this, this country mm-hmm. right now. Right. Um, with that, I, I looked at that documentary last night and I was like, all right, I try to f- put myself into how much different was it then? Well, then you didn't have as many choices to watch shit, listen to shit. Whatever, you had three channels. That was it. You yeah, had ABC, yeah. NBC, CBS, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was it. Yeah. If those are your three options, is that worse? Because you're watching that shit all day long where you don't have anywhere else to go or read or watch or... Right. You don't have any other form of entertainment. But not everyone had a TV. Um, not everyone was sitting in front of it all the time. So it's but like... But what about the, newspapers? Like, you yeah, know, yeah. I looked at the ratings for some of that shit and like, you know... When you didn't have options, right? The entire country was watching the... What was the highest rated show of all time? It was uh, the season finale of MASH at one point, And oh, then yes. I believe Dallas passed it. Yes. But it was like 118 yeah. million or something. So I, I don't know. I mean, if that's your, your one source of entertainment and you have three channels and you're watching that shit all day long, is that worse than today? I don't know. I don't know. What struck me about it is the craziness that was going on back then that is the same or not as bad as right now. So their protests and their, I mean, the stuff they were showing. It was gnarly. It was gnarly. (laughs) I mean, there was blood. There wasn't just girls with shaved heads yelling it. You know what I'm saying? Like there was hardcore shit um, against the media and against what, you know, the same sort of stuff that's happening now. Nixon... His vice president steps down. He appoints Ford. Yeah. So he's chosen. He's the only vice president that wasn't elected, right? Yeah. Then Nixon steps down. Ford picks somebody. Yeah. So there's two people in office that in the highest rank that were not elected by the people. Right. Nuts. (laughs) Yeah. Nuts, dude. Yeah. I mean, that shit's crazy. Trump. Crazy. Trump getting elected in. Listen. It happened. 
Can you imagine if Trump was in there because somebody stepped down, stepped down, stepped down, and then pardoned this guy and all of that? That shit was gnarly. And that shit was, you know, behind the scenes, crazy shit. So l- l- let me ask you this then, because this is a conversation I had with, with Evan, one of my best friends, obviously, yesterday. And I've thought about, I- I've thought this for years, but it's one of those things where you're like, man, I don't want to sound too tinfoil hat guy. Mm-hmm. I personally believe that not only is the country not as divided as as the media says it is, uh, but the racial divide I don't think really exists that much. Um, You know, when you break down the numbers, and I said this about that uh, Virginia, the University of Virginia thing with the Tiki Torch kids, Mm -hmm. there was like 200 of those kids that were, you know, the white people or awesome and all that other shit, like... If you're a white nationalist or, or white supremacist, you, you're just a piece of shit in like today's world. I don't even know how that's that's possible, right? Yeah, and you definitely have to be in hiding. You have to be up in the hills. Yes. Your group has to meet in secret. Correct. Like, so it's uh, when, not a... when you peel back the numbers, mm-hmm. there's about 12,000 people who are white supremacists or identify themselves with sure. a white supremacist. 12,000. 330 million people yeah, that live yeah, in yeah. this country. Yeah, it's a, it's small a very number. small minority. Same with like, you know, extreme black groups like black panthers or, or whatever there's when that whenever there's votes or things aren't going well racially and they'll cut to a picture of that i think the same thing though i'm like there's not there's not that many black black people that are that racist or you know are black panthers like that's got to be a no. very small segment of the population when cnn and people show me shit like that i'm I, i'm like look man yes there's shitty people on both sides but i think it's such a small number by giving them press and camera time, that's what really makes it go, right? So when that happens, I believe, and I've believed this since around 2015 is when this started for me. I believe that because of social media and the way you're able to exploit it uh, through hashtags and bots and all of that stuff, whenever a story uh, like the Charlottesville thing or um, Trump or you know being a Nazi or whatever, mm-hmm. or these hashtags, whenever this gets started and jammed out to the people, I believe... It's other countries that are doing it like Russia Mm -hmm. or China Mm -hmm. to purposely divide the country, even like the Gillette thing. Right. I still believe that Gillette ad. I think I think there was outrage in this country from both sides. We did a show on it, obviously. Um, But I also think that behind the scenes, I think a lot of these news stories are pumped by other countries hoping for a divide, hoping for a social divide. And. The reason being is the more your country is divided and the more you're having these fucking, I I saw Martina Navratilova get uh, ousted from this LGBTQ fucking nine Takashi six, nine thing, whatever, Mm -hmm. whatever they're calling the group now for calling out uh, transgender athletes who are playing in other sports because it's an unfair advantage. It is. It is. And it just is. When it, when it, but whenever you're doing shit like this and you're, you're pumping it out, I think all of this is to create these divides and divisions within this country so that way you'll be exploited later on. Uh, because I think other countries, like Russia in particular, the goal is to become socialist. Right. Or want us to become socialist. And then it's... You can you could take advantage and this country will crumble and you know because mm-hmm. if you really have if you want to see socialism look at fucking Venezuela or you know yeah. France how's that working out um, things like that where you're just like eh. but they're going through sure I mean that guy's sure, gonna sure, be sure. ousted any day that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, fucking yeah. dude Macron or yeah yeah um, when you're going through shit like that if you're able to not cause a war a physical war with, with nuclear weapons or guns or soldiers. And you're able to to change people psychologically. Yes. Yeah. If you're able to change people's thinking psychologically and brainwash them into thinking all of this shit is going on, to me, this is more powerful than any war that could be created. A war you can fight, you can win, or you can get stuck in it like the Middle East for years and years and years and years and years, right? But this will actually change the minds of people growing up. Um, what they're going to do, what they're going to believe in, what they're going to vote for, how they're going to view other people's races. Like this is this, this psychological long game of all of this shit through social media that all of, let's face it, all of the youth is on all goddamn day long from, Mm -hmm. you know, 
Instagram to everything else. I mean, Instagram's the only thing that hasn't been really exploited yet. And I say yet because that, that's only going to be a matter of time. But if you don't control what's happening in, with, with Twitter and Facebook and all that shit, mm-hmm. and it continues, I think it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And the media doesn't care. They actually, I think the media loves it because it's clicks, it's money, it's advertising dollars for them. They have no interest in stopping this or trying to find out what's real or what's not. Um, and I think, I think Trump's best weapon in all of this, why he has no interest in stopping it, is when you have a story like the Jesse Smollett thing or these other things, you can scream fake news all day long and you're right. Yeah. It, it turns, you know, the, what, what does he call? He calls the media the enemy of the people. Mm-hmm. It, it is. And it's, it, it, but it's. But it's not the people that, like, I don't believe that, you know, there's all those journalists are, are doing that. I think that they're getting blamed sometimes for. Yeah, but I mean, you, you take everything this, else swirling around. Lara Logan just did a show. And again, we talk about this on, on Drinking Bros as well. Larry L- Logan did a show, uh, Drop the Mic podcast. She went fucking full scorched earth and said, look, you want the real story of what's going on? 85 to 90% of the media, every single journalist is, is liberal. She goes, that's what's really going on behind the scenes. So it is really hard to not write a report with your fucking agenda when that's what you identify with. It's hard to go against somebody. Um, and, and it's even harder to find sources to, you know, approve your story or whatever. So there's going to be, she's, she's like, look, a lot of these people aren't even going after a second source. It's just all these anonymous white house sources and things like that. She was like, none of it's real. The journalists don't care. The fucking newspapers don't care because they're getting paid for clicks and all that shit. Facebook and Twitter doesn't care because that's all ad revenue for them. Like, you know, so I don't know how any of this changes, but the more and more, if you, the more and more you think about it and the more and more you look at all of these stories, just go to Twitter is all I ask for. If you're, if you're on Twitter, I wouldn't ask you to join Twitter if you're not on it. Cause it's a fucking hellhole full of shitty comments and people. And most of it's fake. I, I roll through there five, six times a day easily because we do all these shows. We're doing six shows a week. I would say on average, four of these hashtags are fake. That they're just, it's just mock outrage shits, but it's coming from other countries yeah. solely to divide us. And I'm on the United States only feed on Twitter. You have the option to go global. Um, I only use the United States feed because like you start to go global. Like I don't, I don't care about cricket in fucking India or, you know, because mm-hmm. they treat their star players like, like we treat our NBA players. So mm. I don't, it's not going to do anything for me in this show if I talk about somebody playing cricket. Right. Sure. But you know, you look at, uh, you look at what's going on now. So I'm, I'm just going to read these right now because these are, these are going on right now. Uh, like hashtag I'm rich because. Okay. There's only 3,500 tweets about this going on right now. But that's trending. Um, I'm rich because, and all of the finishing sentences on this are because of Trump's tax breaks. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I'm rich because I'm white and I have white, white privilege. All, everything that everybody's writing, I'm rich because, is all the issues that people bitch about and talk about all the time. Why did this, this hashtag start trending out of nowhere at, a, at fucking 11 a.m.? Why? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I get, I get so, that. And, and if I you look that. above it, that's, this is number three, okay? Uh, number one that's trending. Just, and then, again, this is just on Twitter. Facebook's a whole other fucking bag of dog shit which they they nuked out their trending topics by the Mm -hmm. way um but number one is love your pet day and that's a real thing and people are posting pictures of their pets that's legit that one's real right but you can see that it's forty nine thousand, forty nine point seven thousand tweets for love your pet day i understand why that's number one in the world great yeah everybody's doing that but i'm rich because at 3500 why yeah like, what is that? Um, you know, and then like Trey Gowdy's trending, like things like that. Like, <sighs> I just have a hard time believing that all of this is, isn't manipulated by somebody else. Because again, I think the best form of warfare is psychological 
and and it's it's essentially free. I mean, you're paying bots yes. or whoever yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. And nobody's I, I, losing I lives. You're not causing any conflict in the world. Yeah. And it's just slowly planting the seeds and seeping into today's society. And that's what it is. The Martina Navratilova thing, like, fuck, man. I, that was another one I got into on, on Twitter with an accident. Um, it was about she, she hates Trump. Congratulations. I don't really give a fuck. Um, mm-hmm. And it made a comment on, on my feed. But her thing today about the, the, the transgender, how they shouldn't be allowed to play sports, that's, that's true. Like, that is fucking true. That's true. You have a, it, her point is this. If you're, a, if you're a man switching over to female and you're born with those genes, you, you are going to dominate the competition. You know what it you does? Are. Yeah, but it does. It makes people, which they don't want to do, but it makes people admit that the biological differences are true. Right. And they don't want to, they, everyone's trying to turn that blind eye to that in that, in that community and the people that support them is, again, we've all said, do what you want to do. Right. You're a guy, you want to be a girl? Sure. But you can't deny the biological differences. You can't say, I'm actually born a woman. If I am, you know, if right. I identify, I, therefore I am, is where it gets, you know, mucky. Yeah, and and, you and know, where people like even liberals have to be like, mm. yeah, I mean we <laughs> that's we, not fair. <laughs> we talked about that that high schooler in Texas who you know identified Especially with if a female you're wrestling was in, or uh, if dude you're, in the hundred yard dash was smoking those girls in the fucking hundred meter yard dash not, in high school. It's not even fair. It's not okay. So this Martina Navratilova thing, and again, like I've gotten into it with her before. She's a liberal, no. Yes. So she's liberal and she's even like, she's, hey. even, so she, it says here, she got officially booted off the advisory board of, of a prominent LGBTQ organization after making comments that were deemed transphobic, which I didn't even, not, I didn't even know that's transphobic. I don't it's know that that's a word. Is it <laughs> transphobic? God oh, we're, we're just yeah. making up shit now. You know? Oh no. I mean, they use it all the time, yeah. but, um, because they can't say what trans is. How do you say racist? I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah. Genderist. Yeah. I guess. But um, anytime these hard, hardcore left people um, are confronted with science, they get real pissed. Yeah. Because it yeah. doesn't go along with what they are believing in their hearts. And so that's like the difference. That's the struggle. <laughs> the struggle with them is what they believe in their heart needs to be fact for everyone else. Right. And, um, you know, moderate or, or even right are kind of like, oh, wait, no, no. So we're just, we're just abandoning that. But that's a whole nother conversation. What, um, I, I, look on this one, I, I, like I'll, I'll stick up for Martina Bratzelib on this one. Absolutely. I mean, this is, you know, and they're saying, uh, she said it's in, insane and it's cheating and says people born with male physiology have a dramatic physical advantage over cisgender women. I hate the term cisgender, but, um. Because it's just women. Yeah, it's just women. Uh, just, just, one hundred percent women. It's just women, just men, a, a and trans people. Those are <laughs> who are transitioning into being one or the other. One or the other, yep. and then you're going to be whatever that is. A trans this. Yes, yes. Um, so I, I just, if you watch sports as much as I do, I mean, I host a fucking sports show for Christ's sakes. I could, I mean, it would be like me. I was look. I was really good at basketball as a kid. You know, I would be like, I, I think about like, I dropped 50 points in a, in a game in the eighth grade, right? Mm-hmm. If I was playing against girls, I could have dropped a fucking hundo on people and went Wilt Chamberlain. Absolutely. And there's a reason, like I was saying with the dunk, crazy. the dunk contest, yeah. I love that it's just, you have to just be good enough, that good. Yeah. It's not a thing of like the women are also going to do it too because we can do anything they can do. It's really just like whoever can drop this many, whoever can dunk like this, yeah. you can enter. If it's a woman, let's go. <laughs> it's just never going to be. Do you know what I'm saying? No, so no. I like those kind of competitions where there's, there's no denying, right? No, and yeah, you yeah, are yeah. allowed. Yeah. You are absolutely allowed to enter. Yeah. And uh, you can be a guy dressed as a woman. You can put on red mm. panties. That's fine as long as you can fucking dunk, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you can identify as whatever you want to. Uh, the issue comes when you know you're 
guys again are dominating. It's like when Caitlyn won the woman of the year. Yeah. It's like you, the guys still are the best at everything, right? <laughs> because that's really how it goes. Yeah. And that's the, the, uh, the answer is that guys really are going to be better in most aspects. For athletes. Athletes, there's certain other things that they just can do better. Yeah. Right? Um, and physiologically and all of that. But, um, you know, there's some things, like I've always said, there's things that we can do better. So let's just do that. Yeah. Better. Um, I don't know what I was I don't know what yeah. I'm talking about. Don't get, don't get me down the transgender hole, I know. dude. I know. Because it gets dangerous. It's a and slippery. It's obvious. It's, a, it's obvious. You're never, ever fooling anyone. Except maybe the Thailand, like the maybe the oh, lady the boys Thai in Thailand. Boys, yeah. That's about it. But we were watching but they're uh, all we dainty. were watching a show the other night where there's a transgender character who's just They didn't make makes, any mention. Makes no mention of it. They're just Don't, trying to pass just, her off as a girl. Mm-hmm. And you're like, hey man. We're not going to say that that's a dude because that's a fucking dude. I guess we don't have to anymore, but don't think for one second that you're getting away with it. (laughs) Yeah. But everyone at home is kind of like, okay, I guess we're just pretending that's a girl. Okay. That's fine. Listen, again, that's fine with me. Yeah. Um, but again, you're not going to, when you see it, you're like, Oh, I know what that is. Kind of like this Takashi six, nine story where he's in jail, snitching on his own people. And he's trying to get his prison sentence down from like 50 years to like 12, right? By okay. snitching on all these people. But he said, look, if I am, you're going to have to put me in some type of witness protection program. I don't know if you've seen Takashi 6 9 what he looks witness like. Witness protection. Ha- like, you, you know what you look like, right? It's the same thing. Like, you know what you look like. You have a giant 69 tattooed on, on the side of your face. I mean, the memes alone. And then the, the other side guy. of your face. Yeah. Is a giant spider web, unless you did fucking John Travolta face off style reconstructive surgery where you put Nicolas Cage's face on. Sure. I don't know what the fuck you're going to do to hide from that, buddy. Uh, he's the most specific looking dude on the sure. planet. Sure. And uh, if, by the way, if he's snitching on all these people in this fucking gang, they're going to get to him and kill him in jail, anyways. That's my prediction. <laughs> yeah. That's my, there's no way. You're not dealing with uh I got murder on my mind. Um, that's, yeah. So interesting. When I read that, I was like, ah, he wants witness protection. He's going to have to go <laughs> to an island and live by himself because that is the only way you're going to be protected. And even then, I don't know. You're like, Jesus. He's the most ugliest, the most specific looking dude I've ever seen. Good luck hiding the 800 face tattoos and the giant 6-9 on your face. I, I mean, I guess, look, you could get them lasered off, but do you know how painful that would be on your face? And you still can see it. Yeah. Have you ever seen somebody's tattoo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah you, you can, can still, still see, see it, it underneath. Maybe uh, you can get it covered up with other stuff. What a dick. Yeah, just put a giant dick. Oh, no, that's not me. I yeah. don't. Nope. 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 See, I'm, it's a dick. It's not a 69. I'm Takashi Dick 9. Uh, yeah, it's just a dick. <laughs> so it couldn't have been. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Can't be. It's not it's Can't not be me. him. Nope. It's not me. Nope. You guys want to go have straight sex and <laughs> hey. watch to the, the game at the beer bar? Hey, you got the kids or do I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of crimes, do we have a crime corner today, James? We do. Man, I am fucking Segway Messiah today, aren't I? Dude, it really has just been a smooth ride with yeah, you today. Yeah, <laughs> let freedom ring. That's a callback joke. To thi- I just need to thank some people. You need to thank some people? Just in the precinct. Yeah, yeah, in the Jables precincts. Um, yes, we're going to... Uh, this story is brought to us by a couple different ah. detectives. Shane Goodman. I mean, he's 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 been working hard sure. for a long time. Um, he may be up for promotion soon. Okay. Um, and then Dave Asayu. Oh. <laughs> Dave the Crazed on Instagram. Dave the Crazed. I Dave like that. the Crazed. Don't be scared. I'm always impressed by sweet handle names on on uh, Twitter or Instagram. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of them. Yeah, when they're really good, like. You know, Aaron Paul's is just glass of whiskey, like from Breaking Bad. Oh yeah, but there it is. It's called something though. 
Oh, glass of whiskey. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. his Instagram handle. It was just like, yeah, oh, yeah. I guarantee, because my name was taken. I guarantee his name was taken too. Where it was just like, oh fuck! All right, I gotta go buy something else. I guess a glass of whiskey. Here we are. Here we go. That's me. Yeah. Wait, do we do the crime corner? Crime. Crime corner. Crime corner. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you there. <laughs> Crime corner. <laughs> okay, so Home Depot bomb threat was actually just a guy in the bathroom joking about <laughs> bowel movement. Oh, take it. he's, all- he's going to drop bombs. <laughs> there it is. He's, you all need to get out of here because I'm fixing to blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> A report of a bomb threat at a Wichita Home Depot store turned out to be nothing more than a warning to customers about going in the restroom. <laughs> I'm going to have to take off the headphones for what this. Do you, what do you, what do you think about that? No? Oh, boy. <laughs> I like how you started off super serious. You thank these people. Yeah. And then... Well, because they, you know, they brought, oh, me, they brought me this story. I was, I was waiting for like some... Some weird domestic, yes, domestic crime more, in Florida. More. <laughs> yeah, that's usually what I go with. But this one, this one, it was the wording that really got me. And, and, and also I spend a lot of time in Home Depot because, you know, in theory, I'm supposed to be a lesbian. <laughs> but I'm not, right? So I like softball. I love going to Home Depot and like. Sure. You know, and a, a comfy Carhartt overall would be great. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? All day long, if I could. Um, fixing stuff, building stuff. I love it. So it's just me and the lesbians in Home Depot most of the time. Um, so I'm just picturing, and I know those restrooms all the way in the back, and they're just like this. They're very, you do feel like you're going into like the back of their warehouse right yeah and if you're going in there and some employee or whatever comes out and says i'm about "Uh, to blow this place up i'd wait a second guys i'm about to blow this place up and then someone calls 911 like some fucking tenderfoot right (laughs) what are you talking about like you really thought that this Portly, you know, this Home Depot guy <laughs> is going to blow up the place. Who are you? Are you Oof. are you European? I mean, what are you talking about? I don't know, but I, I look, I can guarantee They're you. They're in Wichita, too. I, I can fully guarantee you this, that he had some gas station coffee right before he went in. And just or the Home Depot the place. coffee. You know they have those carts out front with the hot dogs and the coffee. No, I've I've not seen those. Oh, once again, I'm I spend a lot of time in Home Depot, so they always have for the guys, the workers, they have like a hot dog cart, yeah, and a coffee situation. But it is very gas station like. <laughs> um, God, that coffee when it hits you, oh, uh, forget it. I mean, the sweat starts immediately, and you, I mean, mid sentence, you've got to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn You've it. You've got to no. go. So I can't, I can't even. Oof. They called 911. And, the, and they came, right? The police came. Oh, yes. The yeah, police yeah, went yeah. out to the Home Depot uh, with a canine unit. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> because. <laughs> that poor dog. They just sniff out the bomb. <laughs> Honey. Oh, uh, I bet you that dog is probably very traumatized right now. Police did some investigating, which I love, like, how that investigation yeah. Must have went, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, guys. So, and just the like conversation of like, no, it are wasn't. We, we dropping bombs in It here? wasn't that. Yeah. Well, James, uh, you did it. You, you've done it again. Y'all you need to get out of here because I'm fixing to blow it up. <laughs> Gosh. God. Uh, you and your, your precinct members, your, your Thanks, boot, guys. boots on the ground. Yeah. Just bringing us the hard, hard hitters hitting. every day. Well investigated every day. Uh, we're going to get to the revolutionary figure of the day after that, James. Right. I'll, after. I'll, I'll be surprised if we don't put a toilet flushing noise after that crime corner. I love it. Um, this one goes out to, uh, George Mendonza. Uh, he passed away yesterday. Oh, he was, guy? He was actually the uh, the sailor who was captured in that that f- famous uh, photograph, kissing a woman in Times Square. You know, okay. when the Second World War had uh, had ended, he died. 
You know, that's, that's Sailor. He's probably racist. What do you think? Here's the thing. It, so that, there's a statue of it, um, of that famous, because he was kissing a nurse. Okay. So he grabbed her and kissed her. He was obviously having some drinks. Big, big deal. Someone defaced the statue yesterday and just wrote Me Too on it after nope. he died. Yep. No! Yeah. How'd the Russians get over here? They were everywhere, I, think I they're, guess. Huh? I think they're over here already. They're everywhere. If you want to be honest about it. Yeah. What was the thing at the Cambridge? Like some of them were caught as like professors or something. Yeah. Is that you're teaching? Because that, look, let's, again, you're, there's no better way to shape a country than by teaching it that. If you look at London, the fucking that dipshit mayor and that whole shit that's going on over there, everybody stabbing each other. Like, sure. And uh, just beware of, of countries that play the long game, right? Like I know. fucking Iran, I know. Iraq. All those motherfuckers, long game. They got somebody in yeah. over here. Yeah. And that's the long game. Now we're talking about Allah and shit. So like this, I mean, this guy dies and then literally that night they, they, they defaced the statue and just write me two on it. I mean, it's fucking crazy. And again, this was 1942 there, or, you know, or 44 when this happened. Um, whatever, man. I, I, fuck, fuck everybody. Basically. <laughs> Basically, that's it. <laughs> I'd pay just to see who this was. I just want one shot of these people. Yeah, who do this shit. yeah. What? What is? Because we talked. There was another story last year. We talked about uh, people defacing um, Jewish cemeteries and like Jewish yeah, synagogues yeah, and things like that. Not, yeah, with like with like Nazi symbols. And it was like I, I didn't believe that that was real. I don't believe that this is real. Like I don't think I think this is somebody paid by somebody else to do all this other shit. The LeBron James thing I don't think is mm-hmm. real. The Jesse Smaller thing was obviously not real. Like I, I don't. I just think people are being paid behind the scenes to do this shit. Or it can be more of the Jesse Smollett thing where people are so mad. Yeah, but because of that. So they're making things seem worse than they are. But because of if you if you're consumed by this media and this culture every day, it all wraps into one another. And then that makes you crazy and you go out and do Mm. fucked up shit. So I got murder on my mind. Play, play that song at the end of this on the audio show. We can't, we'll get flagged on YouTube, but um, okay. play that on there. I want people to hear this fucking song. Yeah, you do need to hear it. It's super eerie. Crazy. Um, so, yeah, drop that right after this. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. And we've got murder on our mind. Good night. Murder on our mind.